Have you ever wondered what gives the human body its distinct shape? The skeletal system is what provides a framework for the soft parts of our body. It is responsible for the shape of every tiny part of us. It consists of various bones as well as joints where bones attach to each other. The skeleton performs numerous functions. It protects the vital organs of the body from damage. The skull, for example, protects our brain, while the rib cage protects our heart and our lungs. The skeleton also stores minerals such as calcium and phosphorus that are required by the body and produces red blood cells. The bone consists of both organic and inorganic material. Compounds of calcium and phosphorus form the inorganic part. If the bone is placed in weak hydrochloric acid, these mineral portions will dissolve. Such a bone is a decalcified bone. It is very soft and flexible. However, if the bone is strongly heated, the organic matter is oxidized and the mineral portions are left behind. Such bones are brittle in nature. As we age, the organic part of our bones is reduced and bones become more fragile. There are a total of 206 bones in the adult body. They may be classified into four types. The long bones such as the femur consists of a shaft with a knob at each end. The shaft of the long bone is called the diaphysis and consists of compact bone. The ends of the bone are called epiphysis and consist of cancellous bones. The long bone is highly calcified and consists of bone cells or osteocytes arranged in concentric rings. The external surface of the bone is covered by a membrane called the periosteum. It is richly supplied with blood vessels. Within the main shaft is a cavity called the medullary cavity. This cavity contains bone marrow which stores fat. Yellow marrow made of adipose tissue and blood vessels produces white blood cells. Red marrow, on the other hand, produces red blood cells. The short bone, such as the wrist or the ankle bone, is box-like and shows little movement. Flat bones, such as those in the skull, are composed of two or more parallel plates of compact bones, enclosing a spongy bone. Irregular bones such as the vertebrae vary in the amount of bone tissue. The axial skeleton includes the basic framework of the body. It consists of the skull, the vertebral column, the ribs and the sternum. The skull is the skeleton of the head. The upper portion of the skull is known as the cranium and consists of eight bones. These cranial bones surround and protect the brain. The lower part of the skull consists of 14 facial bones. The upper jaw is known as the maxilla, while the lower jaw is known as the mandible. With the exception of the lower jaw, all the parts of the skull are connected by joints known as sutures. The posterior part of the cranium contains a large hold called the foramen magnum through which the spinal cord after emerging from the brain continues into the backbone. The vertebral or spinal column is what we commonly refer to as the backbone. The backbone provides strong yet flexible support for the trunk of our body and is an integral part of the skeletal system. The vertebral column consists of 33 ring-like bones called vertebrae. They are connected by facet joints at the back of the spine.
These joints allow movement between the bones of the spine. The vertebrae can be divided into five main regions. They include seven neck or cervical vertebrae, twelve thoracic vertebrae, five lumbar vertebrae, five sacral vertebrae, and four coccygeal vertebrae. The vertebrae of the sacral and coccygeal regions are joined in the adult body to form two fused bones known as the sacrum and the coccyx. The anterior portion of each vertebra is cylindrical in shape and is known as the centrum. The posterior portion of the vertebra is referred to as the neural arch. The neural canal is formed by the union of two neural arches arising from the sides of the centrum. The spinal cord runs through the neural canal. The spinous process or the neural spine is a flat longitudinal ridge projecting upwards from the meeting point of the two neural arches. These arches bear articular facets that help in joining the two vertebrae. The vertebrae are separated from each other by an intervertebral disc. This disc acts as a cushion and helps in absorbing any shocks. Let us take a closer look at the vertebral regions of the backbone. The first two vertebrae at the top of the spine support the skull. The first cervical vertebra is called the atlas, while the second cervical vertebra is called the axis. The pivotal joint between the atlas and the skull allows us to move our head in different directions. The thoracic vertebrae have long spinous processes which are directed backward. Each of their transverse processes bears on its extremity a facet for articulation with the tubercle of the rib. Lumbar vertebrae are the strongest vertebrae. They have well developed spinous and transverse processes for attachment of powerful back muscles. The hip bones are articulated on either side of the sacrum, while the coccyx represents the rudimentary tail of the human body. You will notice that the backbone of the human body is curiously shaped. It is curved in a particular way. This curve allows us to maintain balance and also absorb any shocks or pressure from physical activities or movements. Along with the thoracic vertebrae, 12 pairs of ribs form what is known as the ribcage. The ribcage is essential in protecting the vital organs such as the heart and the lungs. The first seven pairs of ribs are attached to a flat breast plate called the sternum. These ribs are also known as true ribs. They are attached to the sternum by means of costal cartilage. The costal cartilage of the eighth pair of ribs are known as false ribs. The eighth, ninth and tenth pairs are united to each of the cartilage above it. The final two pairs of the ribs are not attached to the sternum. For this reason they are called floating ribs. Thus, the human skeleton not only provides a structure for the human body, but also plays a key role in movement and locomotion.